In this video, we will learn about and compare and contrast nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. In our last lesson, we talked about mass defect and binding energy, the latter of which we define as the amount of energy released when protons and neutrons are bound together in the nucleus of an atom. This is the energy that we get from nuclear fusion and nuclear fission. Let's first learn about nuclear fusion. We know that when we build nuclei, the vanishing mass or mass defect produces a huge amount of energy. That's the idea behind nuclear fusion. In nuclear fusion, two nuclei with low mass numbers combine to produce a single nucleus with a higher mass number. This is an example of a nuclear fusion reaction in which two nuclei, the hydrogen-2 nucleus and the hydrogen-3 nucleus, are combining to form helium-4 and a neutron. Notice that the sum of the mass numbers on the left-hand side is equal to the sum of the mass numbers on the right-hand side, and that the sum of the atomic numbers on the left-hand side is equal to the sum of the atomic numbers on the right-hand side. Also notice that energy is produced. That's the binding energy from the mass defect. We can visualize this process here. So let's figure out just how much energy is created. The mass of the reactants, the hydrogen-2 atom and the hydrogen-3 atom, totals 8.353 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms, and the mass of the products total 8.322 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. That leaves us with a mass defect of 3.1 times 10 to the negative 29 kilograms. We plug that into the equation E equals mc squared, where m is the mass defect, 3.1 times 10 to the negative 20 kilograms, and c is the speed of light, 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second squared. Solving for energy, we get a total energy produced of 2.8 times 10 to the negative 12 joules. This is for the fusion of two hydrogen atoms to form one helium atom. If we used a mole of hydrogen-2 atoms with a mole of hydrogen-3 atoms to make a mole of helium atoms, we would multiply that number by 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms in a mole and get a binding energy of 1.7 times 10 to the 12 joules. That's a huge amount of energy. Nuclear fission is the opposite process to nuclear fusion. In nuclear fission, nuclei are not fused together, but split into two equal parts. This is what is meant when they talk about splitting the atom. There are actually two types of fission, spontaneous and induced. Spontaneous fission describes when heavier nuclei spontaneously split into two smaller nuclei accompanied by the release of neutrons. Induced fission, just like its name suggests, is when large nuclei are forced to split into two smaller nuclei by bombarding them with neutrons. Just as in spontaneous fission, induced fission is also accompanied by the release of neutrons. In this example of induced fission, a uranium nucleus is bombarded with a neutron. The uranium-236 nucleus that is formed is very unstable. Therefore, it splits into two smaller nuclei accompanied by the release of neutrons. Let's calculate the mass defect and binding energy of this induced fission example. Before we calculate mass, notice that the sum of the mass numbers on the reactant side is equal to the sum of the mass numbers on the product side, as are the sums of the atomic numbers equal. Now let's calculate mass. The mass of the reactants, uranium-235 and a neutron, totals 3.9182 times 10 to the negative 25 kilograms, whereas the mass of the products totals 3.9154 times 10 to the negative 25 kilograms. This leaves us with a mass defect of 2.8 times 10 to the negative 28 kilograms. We calculate the amount of energy in this mass defect by plugging this mass into the equation E equals mc squared. Energy equals mass, 2.8 times 10 to the negative 28 kilograms, times the speed of light, 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second squared. The binding energy is equal to 2.5 times 10 to the negative 11 joules. That is for one atom of uranium. For a mole of uranium, the binding energy is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 times as much, or 1.5 times 10 to the 13 joules. Most, if not all, the nuclear reactors that we have been successful in manufacturing are fission reactions, such as the atomic bomb and the reactions inside nuclear reactors. Examples of fusion reactions that occur naturally are the reactions on the sun, stars, and of course, the creation of our very first atoms when the universe began. 
The hydrogen bomb employs a combination of nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. It uses an initial nuclear fission reaction to provide the energy to fuel the nuclear fusion reaction. Let's summarize what we've learned about nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion is the combining of two small nuclei into a heavier nucleus accompanied by the release of neutrons. Nuclear fission, on the other hand, is the splitting of a nucleus into two smaller nuclei accompanied by the release of neutrons. Fission can be spontaneous or induced. The energy from both nuclear fusion and nuclear fission comes from the mass defect, which refers to the fact that the combined mass of the resulting nuclei is less than the mass of the starting nuclei. The mass defect is turned into energy according to Einstein's equation E equals mc squared. The energy resulting from the mass defect is called the binding energy. Nuclear changes release far, far more energy than chemical changes, which release more energy than phase changes.